Ray, it's good to see you and welcome to Magnificent Memories. Ray, can you recall a time you felt a strong presence, a sense of God's presence in your life? And there have been a number of occasions. There are a couple of very significant ones. And one of them, I remember years ago, we were doing, running a youth weekend. Uh, down here in a place called Tin in South Wales. And uh, it, it was just like the presence of God came upon the place. But w- without pushing the metaphor too far, it was like you could get a, a knife and cut a lump of God atmosphere, you know, and all sorts of things were happening at that moment. And young people, and they're, you know, I've had contact with some of them. I'm, I'm going back about, what, 20 odd years ago that happened. And uh, a number of the young people are in that meeting. They, they are going on with God in an incredible way because they had this phenomenal encounter with God. And you can't always necessarily explain what it is, but you just get this overwhelming sense. There was some, you know, you, know, there, you get caught up in a place of joy because God has chosen. But at the same time, you got this, this sense of awe at the sheer holiness of God and just how inadequate that you are. Uh, there so you've got these great contradictions going on as well and I mean I can look back to things like the Isle of Wight youth camp I felt incredibly lonely one year and it was the year which God was I I really sensed the the call of God you know to step out there Um, and sitting down with the then one of the Padres Brian Vidimore and uh, talking about it and uh, uh, I mean he had the the wisdom of the man helped Yes. You know, because it's very easy to jump in, isn't it, and say, oh, it's this, that, and the other. But, yeah, th- there's been those those occasions uh, where you just sit there and you think, yeah, you know, there's the sense of complete and lack of, you feel completely inadequate. But also you get caught in that sense of God's provision. You know, you, you, you just don't, you, you don't have to sort of struggle in that sense because, well, I'm going to do this, but I want to do it through you. You know, Jeremiah talks about being conduits, doesn't he? Uh, you know, that we, we are, because he talks to Israel, talking about you're a broken conduit, that God wants you to be a pure conduit. And, and though, you know, those times, yeah. So, yes, we've known those times. And you look back and you think, yeah, that, 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 that was a point at which something started and also something finished as well. So, you know, it's like when God called me, I, you know, I, I just knew there were some things you, you just stopped it. There's no point going down that route, you know, because it's never going to satisfy. Uh, but it was also the beginning of something different. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's fantastic, Ray, when you can feel something happening, you know, when you can sense the presence of the Lord and his power and it's good to know that those people in the past are still going on with the Lord as well and how the Lord spoke to you when that time where you felt lonely, but God sort of sent Brian to you to minister to you as well. So how close would you say do you feel God with you at this moment in time, Ray? Uh, Yeah. <laughs> You, you have these moments when you get this overwhelming sense that no matter what you're going to do, God's there, you know, and there's other times you, I'm, I'm a great believer in that you, you keep on doing the last thing that God told you to do until he tells you to do something else, you know, um, and which seems a bit strange because you get people who run around, don't they, and say, oh, have you got a word from God for me sort of thing, and you know, I went to a leaders meeting once and obviously this guy who's known to have a prophetic ministry, the people were obviously pestering him, have you got a word from God? And he got up and he said, I believe I got a word from God. And they, where, what is it? He said, yeah, you won't get another one till you finish the last one I told you what to do. <laughs> you know, um, and so there is, you know, there are those times that you are just pursuing something which God has told you to do. Uh, and you know i've got to that point of which when when you start to stray that he starts to nudge you you know you get that sense you know bible talks about the 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 dove on the shoulder we talk about the dove don't we and the dove on the shoulder 
and you know you are tuning all the time so that you uh i, I want to be in i think i've said this before you know i want to be in that position where i don't want to be the dove has lifted and you don't know he's gone like samson when it says he didn't know the lord had left him i want to be in that position was if the feathers start to ruffle i need to say hang on a minute <laughs> you know i hear that ruffling of the feathers so uh, i'm in one of those places at the moment i'm just pursuing what the last thing was god has told me to do at the moment and uh, since i'm uh you know since there's no the clouds are not peeling back and there's no claps of thunder or a great megaphone shouting what do you think you're doing son <laughs> it's that uh you know i'm I'm pursuing that line and uh, you know i've learned over the years to, to pursue that until he redirects me onto something else so that's where i am at this exact moment in time i think that's wise actually and you mentioned samson there as well and like you say, we don't want to go down that route. So what's your earliest memory of feeling God's presence in your life, would you say? Ah, right. This is before I become a Christian. All right. I, I must have been about six, six years old. And uh, there was a cousin, goodness knows how many times removed. It, it was my mother's auntie's son. So you tell me whatever that uh, relationship <laughs> was, but, uh, okay. <laughs> but I went to visit my great aunt, and the her son was dying from a brain tumor. That's why I got dragged over there because mum couldn't offload me because I went with my mother and my grandmother. And um, I can remember uh, just before we left, this great aunt suddenly gets hold of me, and she said, "I'm going to pray for you," and uh, she did. You see. Uh, and I well, wow, there's something going on here. I can distinctly remember that. And I can remember being on the train on the way home because my 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 grandmother, uh, she was a bit of a snob, <laughs> was my grandmother, because uh, she'd been in service. She didn't tell you she had only been a parlour maid, but she had been in service, you know, whereas my great aunt had been a lady's maid. So, you know, in the hierarchy, she was well up the pecking order, you know. Uh, and uh, but she said, oh, don't don't worry about her. And I said, what do you mean? I remember saying, she said, she's, she's one of them. I said, what do you mean? She said, we are Anglican. She's a Pentecostal. She said, my grandmother said that. I then discovered a number of years later that actually this great aunt of mine was one of the founding members of an Elam church. Mm. You know, it was a number of years on that uh, God put his hand on me and then raised me up into becoming a pastor of an Elam church. So I can remember that quite distinctly, that God was there at that time. So, you know, there are encounters which take place <laughs> and you don't that, always know it. <laughs> no, I, that's a lovely story. You know, God had his hand on your life from all that time way back and yeah. it continued, hmm. as you say. That, that's a beautiful story, Ray. So which area would you like most to grow spiritually? Yeah, um, I, I, yeah. I, we, we, learning to overcome. Sometimes we have a propensity to move in presumption of things. If um, if I'm not careful, you can sit there and you can turn around and say, "Oh, I know what this is," because of my experience tells me hmm. that is what it is. And um, I yeah, I remember sort of. Uh, the Lord was sort of wrapping me over the knuckles once because someone come in, they started telling me something which was going on with them. And my, you know, I had this whole rack of uh, uh, little leaflets, like how to, you know, you remember them, you know, you get lots of them like that. And this person started to tell me something. And I thought, oh, right, she needs that leaflet. You know, and I sort of gave her this leaflet. And it's like the Lord saying to me, aren't you going to listen to what they're saying? Or are you moving in presumption? And you're learning not to move into presumption, you know, because your experience would tell you something, but it doesn't always tell you specifically where something is. When I worked for the railways, um, I've told you many times, they taught me well. That's why I'm late everywhere I go, because I, was, <laughs> so I work for the railways, you know. Um, but you got to a point where you, you knew uh, that something was wrong but you didn't always know where it was. 
I remember once we had a, a loco come in one day and everybody had had a go at fixing this thing. And one old boy came in and he just stood there and he listened to it for a moment, you know. And then he went up to it and he, he took this length of metal. And all he did was he put it on the case of the engine and listened to it. And it, then he turned around and said, that is what is wrong with it. Wow. Right? The experience told him something was wrong, but he had to listen to hear quite specifically you know, you know, where the problem was. And then everything else kicks in to put it right, you know. Uh, and that, that, those areas of growing spiritually, that you know you you have that tuning into god so that you, you you're aware that something is not what it should be but you hear him talking to you as to where it is and then all the other stuff to put, actually put put the corrections in to bring it right so you know you, you are constantly growing in those spiritual areas it's something you never stop while you're alive you should never stop you know? no so i the, i agree yeah. So there is that desire in that in that growing uh, in him that uh, learning that you don't know everything. That's right, Ray. I agree with you because we're always learning something new and yes. the Lord wants us to be teachable whatever age we are as well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. last week we had one of the grandchildren here. All right. And I've got a couple of kiddies games on one of the tablets. Yes, and you know they're, they're you know they're more educational rather than a game per se that's there, and there's a game in which you have to construct a uh, a picture, and it's all with little squares and that. Uh, you have to compare and that. So, uh, and so I said, well, if you do it this way, and, and you know, oh no, he was determined to do it his own way. Mm. You see, um, well, actually, there was nothing wrong with either way because we no. both got to the end, you know. And so I'm learning, hang on a minute, I also need to listen to what the grandson is saying. It's this, it's not just big granddad. <laughs> yeah, that's a, a good illustration there. And finally, what is a small step you feel that you could take to draw closer to the Lord? Certainly in this whole, rare, whole arena of intimacy uh, with God, um, uh, it, this might sound strange, but um, yeah, I mean, Helen and I have been married, what, 40 odd years as well, you know, because she was one of the bridesmaids <laughs> at the wedding. But I look at back at what we've got now. Right. And what we had when we first got married. And sometimes you think, was I in love when I got married compared with what I've got now? Compared with this sense of which we have walked together for so many years that we know each other pretty well. You know, uh, that sense of the, the intimacy of growing with God. Um, Elijah, um, oh, Kings 19, isn't it? When he'd had the running with uh, the prophets of Baal up on Carmel and he had the phenomenal victory and, you know, the fire had come down. Um, and he ran away from Jezebel. And he, he then has a pity me party, doesn't he? Yes. Uh, you, know, part, I'm, you know, I'm the only one left and all the rest of it. Uh, and I find it fascinating that God didn't sort of get hold of him and give him a slap in saying, listen, here, you stupid man, did he? He didn't sort of give him a good. All he did was initially was he just fed and watered him. He just yeah. left him in the cave. He left him because Elijah wasn't, wasn't in any fit state of mind to hear anything because he no. was so wrapped up in other things. And so all God did <clears throat> was he, he fed him and he watered him. There. And then the lord says to him he said go and stand at the entrance of the cave so uh and that's when we see that there comes the the strong wind there comes the earthquake there comes the fire none mm. of those things impressed elijah you know none of them because mm. he's still there but then he heard the still small voice and that's when he got up and moved uh and this this area of learning to hear that small voice uh, I've recently had a, an issue we've been dealing with, and yeah, you know, I just felt the Lord say to me, you know, in, in that still small voice, is Smith, keep your mouth shut, <laughs> which for me is quite hard, really, you know, because I have an opinion. <laughs> um, and other things, he said, are you going to trust me by keeping your mouth shut? Because I will sort this out. Uh, and so I'm saying, yeah, that, that this place of intimacy with God, 
uh, sometimes God just waters you and feeds you. And it doesn't matter what the impressive things that may be going on round about you. It is the still small voice that will take you. You know, that, that you are, can, this is it. You know, the authentic voice of God in that arena. Yes. And I think that is right. We do need to hear God's still small voice, as you say, Ray. That's important, very important. And I like that what you said about Elijah. I hadn't thought of it quite that way, actually. And that was a good point where you said how God fed and watered him because he wasn't in the place for anything else until he heard the Lord's still small voice. So that was a really good point there. So, Ray, thank you for joining me today. It's been interesting and I've enjoyed talking to you about magnificent moments. Thank you, Ray. God bless Thanks. you. God bless you. Bye. Uh, 